Welcome back everyone to the next video in our Thinkorswim tutorial series where today we're going to be learning how to set up our watch list and create really simple pricing alerts within Thinkorswim. Both of these are actually extremely easy to do once you see how it's done, but later on in a separate video we're going to actually discuss how to create dynamic watch lists and dynamic alerts. Think of these as scanners that are constantly looking for certain things and then once those things happen, Either you get alerted or that stock symbol is added to your watch list. But today we are going to stick with the basics. So beginning first with creating and customizing our watch list, we're going to go ahead and begin by using the watch list we've already got made over here on our side panel on the left hand side. So here at the moment you can see I've got a watch list called default. And if I click on that, that'll actually bring up a menu and I know it looks a little bit weird but all of these are watch lists that we could access. Nearly all of them are going to be watch lists that Thinkorswim makes for us, but if we look up here towards the top where it says personal, this is where ours are going to be stored once we make them. You can see here I've got three in here, and honestly everyone has these by default. On the very first time you log in, you're going to see these as well. But eventually once we make our own, we can get rid of these, and just keep in mind that the personal section is where all of your watch lists are going to be. Now, to create a new one, we're actually going to come down here below to create a watch list. That'll then bring up this little menu here called New Watch List, where the first thing we're going to do is simply give our watch list a name. In my case, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to call it My Watch List. And then looking down below, I could actually add my symbols here. Or if I come down and hit Save, I could actually add symbols by simply finding the empty row here clicking in that empty box, and then typing in the symbol I want to add. So in this case, I've typed in AAPL, and once I hit enter, we can now see Apple has been added to that watch list. To add the next symbol, we'll simply come down to the next row, and the next one I'm going to throw in is going to be Netflix. Again, we just type it in, hit enter on the keyboard. We'll then go ahead and add a few more, just for example's sake here. And then later on, if I ever wanted to get rid of one of these, like let's say I wanted to get rid of Bank of America, all I need to do is click on that row, simply delete Bank of America, and then hit enter on the keyboard. And now you can see that row has been cleared out, and we no longer have Bank of America in this watch list. Now I could also reorganize where these symbols are at by simply clicking and dragging the symbol where I want to move it. So in this case, I move Google down from the bottom, just below Apple. I could also sort these symbols by clicking on the little header up here at the top. So in this case, if I click on symbol, I've now rearranged it to alphabetical order. If we were instead to click on the last traded price, now we're seeing the cheapest stocks down to the most expensive. We click on net change, we're seeing the stocks that had the worst down moves, and then at the bottom, the biggest up moves. But I think you get the idea. Nothing too crazy. Now, going back to our previous watch list, because remember, now we've got our own in here. We've got my watch list up here in the personal section. If I now wanted to delete the default indexes and quotes watch list, what I'll need to do is come over back to my menu, look at the very bottom, find delete, and then select the one I want to get rid of. So in this case, I am going to go ahead and delete default. Go ahead and say yes. I also want to get rid of those other two. So I'm just doing the exact same thing as before deleting indexes, and next up we'll delete quotes. And now if we go back up to the personal section, we're going to only see that one watch list that I made. You can also see at the top of the menu, another thing you might use is right up here where it says current account positions. If I was to select that, this watch list is now only going to show me what symbols I have in this account. So in this account, I've got at and I've got Intel, I've got WBD, and I've got this mutual fund right here. Now, besides making the watch list, if you ever wanted to customize what you're seeing here, so instead of seeing last, net change, bid and ask, what we would do to change that is click on the little gear icon in the upper right-hand corner. We'll then come down below and hit customize, and that'll bring up our little watch list menu here, if I move it a little bit. Here on the right, we can see all of the columns we're currently using. And then here on the left are all of the columns that we could add. And you can look through here. The list is very, very long. But if I wanted to search for something, I could always come up here to look up a column. 
And for this one, let's say I always wanted to keep track of the stock's PE ratio. So we'll throw in PE here. I also want to know the yield. So the dividend yield, we'll go ahead and add that. And as somebody who trades options, something I'm looking at all the time is going to be the IV rank, which in Thinkorswim is actually named IV percentile. We won't go into this right now, but I wanted to see how to add new columns. So go ahead and click on that, add item. And I could also get rid of certain columns that I might not need. So let's say I wanted to get rid of the bid and the asking columns. And now to see those changes take effect, we'll come down here and hit OK. Looking back over here at our watch list, we can now see those three new columns here, PE, yield, and IV percentile. And it looks like the yield is a little squished. So if I wanted to make this side panel a little bit wider, I could always hover my mouse over the divider line here and just drag it to the right a little bit. That way I now have a little bit more space for my watch list right down here. Now, for those of you watching who might want to have multiple watch lists on their side panel, what we could do is change this Trader TV up here. We'll go ahead and change this one to a watch list as well. And just to go over that one more time, we're going to go ahead and click on the watch list name up here. And we're going to come down below and create a brand new one. And this one is actually going to be my index watch list. So I can keep track of what the overall market is doing anytime I need to simply by looking over here on my side panel. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and throw in SPY. I'm going to go ahead and throw in, well, actually, excuse me, instead of SPY, let's use the actual index itself. So SPX will then add the future symbol for the S&P. This way I can keep track of what the S&P is doing in the after hours. And I'll go ahead and add, let's say NDX, go ahead and throw in the futures for the NASDAQ. We'll throw in the Dow Jones as well. And finally, the Dow Jones futures. We can also customize these columns as well for my index watch list, because if I look here, the bid and asking columns don't make a whole lot of sense. So to edit that, we'll again hit the little gear icon here. We're going to customize it. And for this one, I'm going to keep it relatively simple. I'm going to go ahead and remove the bid and the ask, and I'm instead going to add the percent change. That way I can actually see how much is the index up or down today percentage-wise. So how much is the Dow up? How much is the S&P up? What's the NASDAQ doing? And to save that, we'll just come down below and hit OK. But that's pretty much it. That's how you can create and customize watch lists within Thinkorswim. Moving on to the alerts. Again, it's relatively simple, and there are a few different ways to do it. But the first method is by simply pulling up a chart for the stock you want to create an alert on, and then just right-clicking anywhere on the chart. That'll then bring up this little menu here, where we do see a lot of different options of things that we could do. But if we look down below, the button we want to click on is the one that says Create Alert. That'll then bring up this window here, which I know looks a little bit crazy, especially with the big chart in the middle of the screen. But all we need to do is focus on these little inputs up here at the top. If all we're trying to do is create a simple pricing alert, saying, hey, if Google goes above 180, send me a text message. Or if Google ever falls below 150, alert me. All we have to do is change these two inputs right here. So if I wanted to be alerted if Google ever went above 180, all I have to do is change this to 180. You can then see here, all it's saying is, if Google the stock ever has a traded price, mark just means the current price, is ever at or above 180, send me an alert. If we then come down here and hit create, you can now see that alert directly on my chart. If we wanted to make another one just saying if Google falls below 150, I also want to be notified. We'll again simply right click anywhere on the chart, come down below and say create alert. And then this time we're going to change this from at or above to at or below. And we're going to change this number to 150. We'll again come down below and hit create. And now, just like before, we can see that alert right here at 150. If you wanted to keep track of all of your alerts on all your different stocks, or even if you create a dynamic alert later on, where we're going to access that is up here on the Market Watch tab, and then find and open up the Alerts page. So now looking down here below, we can see both of those alerts we created, and it looks like those are the only two in the entire account. So looking here at the trigger, we can see this first one is our alert if it ever goes below 150. 
this is the one that alerts us if it ever crosses above 180. If we ever wanted to cancel those, we could simply right click on it and then either hit cancel alert if we just want to get rid of it or replace alert if we want to edit it in some way. I could have also canceled those simply by going back to the chart for Google and then just hitting the little X over here on the right hand side if I wanted to get rid of them. But either way, doesn't matter too much. Now, the final thing I'm going to mention before we go is making sure you guys understand how we can set up where our notifications get sent. So when this alert triggers, when this alert actually goes off, do you just want to hear a sound on your computer? Do you want to get a text message? Do you want to get an email? How do you want to be alerted? The way we're going to set that up is actually by coming up here to the setup menu in the upper right hand corner and then opening up the application settings. Now, within this setup menu, all we have to do is come up here to notifications. We can then come down below to where it says alert is triggered. And this is where we can set up how we want to be notified. You can see currently I'm going to be getting a sound. It's going to give me like a little ding on my computer. I'm also going to get a push notification to my phone if I have Thinkorswim downloaded on my phone. And looking above, you can see we don't even have the ability to check mark these ones to send an email or to send a text message. And that's because up here above, I don't have an email or a phone number to send that to. So if I wanted to add those, I would simply type in my email up here above or add my phone number right here. And then once I add it, you're going to get a little code and then you have to type in the code here to verify it really is your phone number or your email. But that really is the basics of creating watch lists and alerts within here. Check out the next video in the series where we're going to be learning how to practice everything we've learned so far within paper money. So click the video below and I'll see you there.